Uh, hi. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, nice win today. Um, you're just incredibly locked in out there on the court, it seemed like, especially today, not getting particularly rattled or distracted. What is that coming very easily to you these days, seemingly? And, and can you explain why? Um, no, I don't think it's, it's uh, you know, coming very easily. I think, you know, I was just trying to focus uh, within myself and um, not really look ahead or, uh, you know, think about, you know, what position I was in really, uh, you know, playing for the semifinals at a Grand Slam. Um, you know, I was just really just trying to take one point at a time and really just uh, just control my emotions and uh, not get too high or too low. Is it easier when there's no one around? It's a little bit easier when there's when there's no fans to, yeah, a little bit easier, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh, let's go to Adesina from a loss. Adesina, you were live. Uh, Jennifer, congratulations uh, on your win and making it to the semifinals. Uh, building off of the crowd aspect, um, does a part of you uh, wish that for your first true breakthrough in a Grand Slam into the semifinals, that you had that roar and applause of the crowd to go with it, to have that everlasting memory? And is there a part of you that maybe a few years um, after this, you look back and think, man, I wish I had that roar of the crowd uh, in remembering that this moment as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, if, if the crowd was there, I think it would have been awesome, you know, to uh, have that experience to, you know, even just experience the loud, you know, roar on Ash uh, with 20,000 people. So I think, uh, you know, I'm, I definitely... Uh, would have enjoyed that, but you know the the times that we're in it unfortunately we can't have that and I'm just I'm just happy to be out there competing Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Let us go to Joel from CBS 21 Joel you are live with Jennifer Very good first of all um, congratulations from all of your Pennsylvania fans. Thank you. Thank you. I love it <laughs> Uh, this is obviously uh, got to be the high point of your career so far. Can you look back on what was maybe one of the lowest times and compare the two and maybe think about how much confidence you still had then to eventually reach a day like today? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I would say I, I would say there was a huge difference in my in my attitude and my outlook of things, just my perspective in, uh, you know, in life. Um, I would say today I'm just, you know, enjoying every single day. Uh, you know, I have a very positive outlook on life and, you know, just not even tennis, just even off court. Um, I would say, you know, I enjoy everything that I'm doing daily and uh, I, I hope I continue to think like this and, um, you know, can enjoy each and every single day. You can have a follow up, Joel. Yeah, so I mean, back then, did you say, all right, it, we're, it's going to turn around, we're going to be okay someday, and we'll get to this point? I mean, we all have doubts in our career. Where, where was you, what was your level when you were at that point? Yeah, you know, um, I think uh, if, I can, if I can think back at a time, I mean, I was playing, you know, challenger events, lower challenger events, losing in the qualifying first round, and I was thinking, okay, do I have a chance to make it? Will I make it? Um, you know, how can I really succeed doing this am i meant to play this sport you know there were a lot of doubts a lot of questions um you know definitely not positive thoughts you know during those times but i think you know i was i'm i'm pretty lucky to have you know just stuck stuck to it and uh just just really just continue to just play and practice and compete and get better and uh you know here i am today thank you joel uh, once again, if you have a question, please indicate to us that you do have a question. And if you have a follow-up, please indicate that, and we'll try to get to it if time permits. Jennifer, if you could just turn to the blue monitor on your left, Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. Taking each of your possible next opponents separately, what do you think of most when you consider Naomi's game? And then would you please answer the same question regarding Shelby? Um, I I would say, um, I mean, obviously Naomi's won, you know, Grand Slam. Uh, she's obviously a great player, very powerful, big serve, big shots off the baseline, uh, one-two punch. She's, uh, you know, she's a really good player. And then 
Um, I would say, you know, Shelby, she's a really good friend of mine. Uh, you know, super happy for her to be in the quarterfinals, you know, playing tonight against Naomi. Uh, and um, honestly, I think that would be awesome if the two of us could, you know, battle it out in the semifinals here at the U.S. Open. But, you know, I think uh, Shelby also has a really strong game. She's looking really fit these days. And, um, you know, whoever I face, I think it'll be a really tough match. Okay, thank you very much. Let's go to back to the video board. Let's go to Courtney from the WTA. Courtney? Yep. Hey, Jen. Um, can you just talk through the match today? Um, obviously, you're a different player than the one that played Putintseva, you know, previously. So the head-to-head -head kind of had a bit of a caveat coming into the match. But um, talk about just having to navigate that match and how you were able to get it done so cleanly. Um, you know, coming into the match today, honestly, I was I was feeling like I was going to poop my pants, but uh, I was very nervous, um, and I just I just tried to really just stay calm and like keep it cool as a cucumber out there. You know, um, uh, I think in the fourth game I was serving and I really started to feel my legs, so you know, it kind of it kind of helped me a little bit. I just started thinking about that, and I was like, oh, like you know, I'm not I'm not feeling great, whatever. So it kind of took my mind off the match a little bit, and then I was able to recover and then really focus in and think, okay, well, you know, I'm up 4-2. Um, you know, how has the match been going? You know, I've been winning points when I'm playing aggressive tennis, um, but not overplaying. So, you know, I kind of was like, okay, if I just continue that then and just take it one point at a time, you know, I can at least, you know, put myself in a position to uh, serve for the set if I just continue to just – you know, play my game, and then I was able to do that. And then in the second set, I felt like, you know, I was continuing off the same thing, you know, just playing aggressive tennis, uh, looking for my forehand, serving well, um, trying to be aggressive off returns when I could. Yeah. Why were you so nervous ahead of this match? What were the things that were swirling in in your head this morning and, and maybe even starting yesterday? Um, just thinking it's my first semifinal final. Uh, you know, last time I played on Ash, it wasn't that great, um, and uh, yeah, it was. It was. It, it wasn't like a pressure. I wasn't putting pressure on myself or anything like that. But I was. I was definitely a little bit more nervous today than I was in the other matches. Thank you. Uh, let us go to the board on your left. Would you just look on the board to your left? Joel Drucker from Tennis.com. What was it that made you decide to take the major step a few months ago and go to Germany to put in all this work on your game? Um, I decided to go to Germany to uh, because I found a new coach, and he was based out of Germany as well as um, my trainer there, Daniel. Um, and I decided if if I you know want to give myself uh, an opportunity to maximize my potential and see where you know see how far I can get as a tennis player, I think I have to make a change and. Um, because they were based out of Germany, I decided, okay, I'll go to Germany. I had no problem with that. Um, you know, I was looking forward to it, something different, something out of the box, you know, different from the usual, just staying at home, training in uh, Florida. So uh, went over to the to Germany and trained uh, indoors in the, in the winter. And, you know, I was a little concerned about that, uh, playing indoors in the cold uh, weather before going to Australia. But honestly, it really didn't uh, make much of a difference. And yeah, really happy with the decision. Great. Thank you very much. Let's go back to the video board. Let's go to Jeff from Newsday. Jeff, you are live. Jennifer, what's the difference between the Jennifer who lost in 46 minutes to Pliskova in 2017 and the player who won in 69 minutes today? Um, three years. Uh, three years can make a huge difference. I think, you know, I've matured. Uh, I've definitely gotten a lot better. I feel a lot stronger out on court. Um, have a lot more confident, confidence in myself and my game. I know what I'm doing out there. I believe in, uh, you know, I believe in myself and my game, that I'm good enough to, to win matches and to be at this level and to be where I am today. And what role did Michael play in all of that, especially um, your confidence level? I would say all of it, uh, you know, and my trainer, you know, getting me a lot fitter, stronger, um, and then also knowing what to do with my game, you know, having a clear game plan on every single match that I go out there and I know what I have to do uh, in order to win the match, um, you know, having 
good execution and um, yeah, just just uh, playing within myself, but playing aggressive tennis. Thank you. Continue on the video board, Colette from Zoo Tennis. Colette, you are live. Hi, Jennifer. Congratulations. Hey, Colette. You're one of you're one of the few women that have played regularly doubles um, in the last. I don't know. Certainly since they, the comeback. I was wondering what that does for your game and if you plan on doing that going forward since you're having so much success. Yeah, um, I would say, you know, playing doubles uh, is, is great for, you know, just in general for the singles game as well. You know, you're able to work on returns, serves, um, you know, gr aggressive uh, playing, um, also able to practice pressure situations. Um, you know, I think it's playing doubles definitely helps your singles game uh, in all aspects, um, you know, just just being able to get that, you know, match practice, match preparation before uh, playing singles matches. And then it also builds confidence, just getting wins from doubles. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Colette. Jennifer, we're just going to wait 30 seconds. Uh, if anybody else has a question who is on the board, please type in that you have a question, put your camera on and put your microphone on. We're just going to wait about 30 seconds and see if there's any further response. Thanks for your patience. Let's go back to Courtney from the WTA for a follow-up. Courtney? Hey, Jen. Uh, what's the conversations been like with everybody back home, your family? Uh, I assume you've been keeping in touch with them and FaceTiming after matches and stuff. What, how have they been reacting to, to, to all of this? Um, you know, they're, they're super excited. Uh, they're, they're really happy for me. Um, Actually, today uh, was the first time I FaceTimed my mom, and she like started bawling. So uh, that was that was nice. You know, she she's very emotional. She was very proud of me. She was happy. I'm sure she's watching this somehow. But uh, yeah, it's it's been nice to to receive support from everybody, not not just my family, like my friends, uh, past coaches. You know, everybody's been uh, messaging me, and it's been really nice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jennifer. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you.